I'm a bit of a fish out of water here because I'm going to ask you not to look forward, but to look backward. Uh, my interest is in human evolution, particularly the evolution of human cognition. But tonight, I'd like to talk about something maybe familiar to some of you. I imagine that you've all taken, not all of you, but many of you have taken a course in art history. And courses in art history tend to start with things like this. This is a panel from a cave in France called Chauvet. Uh, it was painted somewhere between 35,000 and 40,000 years ago. And if you look at it, everyone recognizes this as being an aesthetic experience. You have one looking at it, I have one looking at it, everyone has one looking at it. But there's a curious thing that you may also have heard in your art history class, is that there are no antecedents to this. That is, if you look in the archaeological record, this pops out of nowhere as if it didn't develop. And I would like to disabuse you of that idea tonight, because in a sense, the curious question I asked, along with my colleague Tony Berlant, who's an artist from Los Angeles, is what actually went before this? Is it possible that there were no antecedents? And it turns out we're looking for the wrong thing. If you're looking for works of art, the answer is yes, there's nothing before this, or very little. But it turns out that aesthetic experience actually has roots that go back probably at least 1.8 million years, and perhaps even further. Now, being a college professor, I have to have at least one tedious slide, and that's the next one. Okay. <laughs> As Tom mentioned, I'm a cognitive archaeologist, so I'm interested in what the past tells us about the evolution of human cognition. And so what I'm going to start with is a question about the nature of human aesthetic experience from a cognitive point of view. That is, what happens in your mind when you have an aesthetic experience? And it turns out that there are three different components cognitively to an aesthetic experience. One of these is clearly perceptual, that is, you're perceiving something. So in visual aesthetics, uh, you perceive patterns, you perceive colors, and so forth. And these actually, when you see these things, they're connected to the emotion centers of your brain and they provide pleasure. So that's the first component, and it's one we're going to be talking a lot about. The second component is a judgment component. To be an aesthetic experience, you have to be making a decision about it. I like it, I hate it, it's beautiful, it's ugly, I'm bored to tears. Um, so that's what distinguishes aesthetic experience from simple perception. That is, you're actually making a judgment about what you see. The third component um, is what I call a cultural symbolic component. It's when you go into the art museum and you see Picasso and you ask, what does that mean? Okay. Um, so all of our artistic productions take place in a cultural symbolic milieu. The interesting thing that we're going to see is that that has not always been true. First of all, we need to talk a little bit about stone tools. Not a lot. I've been studying stone tools for 50 years. They are actually extremely boring. Um, <laughs> they are. Um, this is a, what's known as a pebble chopper. It's about 1.8 million years old. It's from Moldavai Gorge. It's about the size of my fist. Um, basically, an early hominy took a cobble, bashed a couple of pieces off of it, got a sharp edge, used the sharp edge to bash into some bones of some animals, had some marrow, end of the story. There's nothing aesthetic about this object, as the individual who made it was interested in getting something to eat, was not interested particularly in what the object looked like. But even that old, even that long ago, oops, we find some curious things. Um, this is from a site in South Africa called Makapanzikot. Um, and this is a pebble of jasperite. It's a found object. This isn't made. Nobody made this thing. But about two and a half years, a million years ago, somebody picked this up and carried it to Makapanskot. It's not local stone. Somebody carried it from a long distance away. We think it might have been an Australopithecus, which is a form of early hominin. Now, what's interesting about this is that it doesn't really say anything about symbolism or art or deep meaning. But what it does tell us is they recognize faces. 
And when they examined objects, they recognized faces. And faces are very interesting because they're a very salient pattern, cognitive. You have lots of neurons that are devoted to recognizing faces. And it's going to come up again and again in the next few slides, this idea of faces being a salient pattern. So clearly, even two and a half million years ago, our ancestors were looking at objects and seeing something interesting in them. But things really get going, well, from an archaeological point of view, get going fast, 1.8 million years ago, with these things. I know they don't look like much. Um, this is a scale, it's about six inches long. These artifacts are known as hand axes. It's sort of actually a misleading term. They may not have been held in the hand, and they almost certainly weren't axes, but we call them hand axes anyway. Um, what's interesting is these are the first time that your ancestors, probably Homo erectus, by the way, actually tried to put form onto an object. That is, they were imposing shape on these things. And they're very basic shapes. They're a bilateral symmetry that you can just pick up. And this one, anybody, oops, let's go back. Anybody pick up a face on this one? When I saw it, I didn't. So it had to be the artist who was missing. He said, Tom, it's a face. He said, what are you talking about? You're out of your mind. Um, but pretty much everybody who looks at this sees a face, except the archaeologists, who, as I said, are extremely boring. So um, interesting question is why, and we don't know but they were actually seeing something in these artifacts and they're modifying them for some reason. And not only do we see bilateral symmetry, we see radial symmetry. These are made objects, they're not found objects. These were cobbles of quartzite that they bashed repeatedly to get a round form. Um, we don't know why. Lewis Leakey thought they were bolas. Lewis Leakey drank a lot. I'm not sure that, not, that's what they were. Um, so, but what we're seeing here is really the perceptual component of aesthetic experience. These are perceptual phenomena. That is, symmetries, there are um, dedicated neural groups in your visual cortex for picking up symmetry. And when you see symmetry, it fires off neurons in your pleasure uh, cells in your brain and you see pleasure. So what we're seeing for the first time is that hominins are imposing shape because it's pleasing to them. And then they go crazy about this for about a million years, very slowly. Okay. We're going to jump up to about 800,000 years ago. Um, especially I'd like to talk about this artifact. I think you can see everything I talked about previously. There's bilateral symmetry. But in this case, they took a lot of care to produce this. This is a wonderfully finished artifact. Um, it's from Gesher Bernat Yaakov in Israel at 780,000 years old. Um, beautiful artifact. Over here, artifact about the same age from Mauritania. Again, you can see a face. In this case, this is a functional tool. It's called a cleaver. This is the working end up here. Has two eyes. Looks like a feline face. And then they start doing all sorts of interesting things. Um, I like these artifacts because what they're doing is exploiting color, uh, in particular the texture and the color of the artifact. This is from Lewa in Kenya. It's really a deep black, it's almost blue. Um, beautiful artifact, about 600,000 years old. If you look at the other artifacts at the site, they're all junky brown caca, to use some to coin a term. Okay. Um, this is another one, this one's from, also from Mauritania. Um, and you can see that they selected a really brilliant piece of stone here. This, by the way, is not very easy to work. It's kind of a hard stone to work. But you can see that they picked it because of the actual um, crystals in the center of it. It's a sort of metamorphosed conglomerate is what it is. There's a phenomenon in neurosthetics known as peak shift. So basically, if there's a percept that you find to be pleasurable, if you exaggerate that percept, it's more pleasurable. So that's the basic principle behind political cartooning, by the way, is this idea of peak shift. That is, you give Donald Trump really big yellow hair as opposed to just little yellow hair. Okay? That's an example of peak shift. And we see it in these artifacts. This is a remarkable artifact. It weighs over two kilos. This is not a hand tool. Nobody was picking this up and using it as a tool. It's way too heavy. If you dropped it, you'd break your foot. Um, 
So you can get a good idea of the size of these things, yet somebody invested a lot of time and effort to produce this nicely symmetrical artifact. This one is also from Algeria, from a site called Tabul Bala, which is now out in the middle of the Sahara Desert. But 300,000 years ago, it was not so dry in the middle of the Sahara Desert. And what we see is the hominids striving to produce this beautiful bilaterally symmetrical teardrop shape. We also see something we call framing. That is, they use the hand axis to actually focus attention on certain objects. This one's pretty obvious. There's a shell in the middle. Um, whoever made this chipped around the shell um, and use it for who knows what purpose, but clearly they're drawing attention to it. And you all see the face in this one. This one is particularly interesting. Um, a French neuroaestheticist uh, known as Changeau uh, argues that ambiguity is a very important part of aesthetic experience. And if you look at this object long enough, you can begin to see the face. There's an eye here, the nose is here, mouth is here. Um, very interesting because sometimes you see it and sometimes you don't. So I've talked a little bit about the first component, which is the perceptual component to aesthetic experience, and I think clearly it's in place by 1.8 million years ago. What about evaluation? How could we ever tell whether they're actually making judgments about these things? Well, there's something we call exceptionalism. It's not quite the same as we talk about it in politics, but let's talk about this artifact for a little bit. It's from a place called Katupan in South Africa. It's about 600,000 years old. Uh, it's made out of ironstone, and it's this beautifully layered stone. And if you look closely, you can see how the stone napper removed lots of little flakes so that you can see the layering very clearly. So clearly what they're doing, it's like a woodworker trying to pull out the grain of stone. What they're trying to do is produce a beautiful artifact. When we were looking, when we were looking at, at this site, we went through crate after crate after crate of these things, and over 800 of them were really awful. I mean, they just really look like hunks of stone, and then there's this one. And that's actually not unusual for sites of this age. What you will find is hundreds of average, boring-looking stone tools, and then one really brilliant one. This is from a site in England called Cuxton. These are centimeters. Uh, the artifact's about this big. And the inter one of the interesting things about it, oops, if you look up here, you can see this little channel running up here. After whoever made this finished it, took the hand axe, hit the tip with a hammer to bring that flute off. If they did it wrong, what would happen? The whole thing would shatter. So somebody's showing off here. Very clearly, that's what's going on. Now, we don't know why. You can all think of possible reasons for this. Um, but probably in the social domain. But clearly, they made this artifact. And when they did it, they were making a judgment. That is, I'm making this because I want it to be better than everything else. And if you look at everything else at the side, it's pretty ugly looking. Um, so, finally, Tony and I actually stumbled across these in a museum in France. They're actually from a site in Algeria called Bentejean. If you want to Google Bentejean, it's so far out in the middle of nowhere, there aren't even any roads out there today. Um, but here's this collection of artifacts collected by a French army officer in 1979. What he was doing out there, I don't know. But anyway, if you look closely at these things, they're about 300,000 years old. Um, and if you can see, somebody's got a lot of trouble to chip along here to produce this and this and this and this. Um, it's an equid, it's a horse. Um, that is, somebody has made a stone tool to look like an animal. And this is the first time that we actually see that third component of aesthetic experience, which we would call a symbolic component. Now, technically, this isn't true symbolism. It's what we call iconic reference. Um, that is, you're making an image of something. But it's not really until this point that we're beginning to see what we might call art in the modern sense. Interestingly, if you follow the news, um, I know you all follow the paleoanthropology news, right? Um, 
But uh, last year, uh, Hublin, the French uh, paleoanthropologist, re-excavated at Jebel Ehud, which is in Morocco, not very far from here, and found the oldest anatomically modern human yet dated. Guess how old it was? 300,000 years. So what we're seeing here, about 300,000 years ago, really, if you want to talk about the birth of art from our perspective, it goes back probably that far. This is a fairly famous artifact in paleoanthropology. Um, if you go to the Israeli Museum, you can look at this. It's on display. Don't be confused. It's about an inch long. It's about this big. So this is much exaggerated. Can you see the woman? Actually, I show this to my introductory classes. I say, who sees a woman? And half the people raise their hand. And then I say, engineers, who sees a woman? And none of them raise their hands. Um, I don't know why that is, but uh, uh, um, I think it has to do with a certain amount of skepticism, I think it is probably what it is. Um, I wax and wane about this, but um, this is arguably the oldest human sculpture humanoid or human form sculpture in the world from Barakat Ram, 230,000 years. This is a modified object, by the way. It's not a found object. Um, you can look microscopically and whoops, see the scratches uh, that were used um, to produce the artifact. Okay. So the whole point here, as far as Tony and I are concerned, is that there is a deep his history to human aesthetic performance. It goes back at least 1.8 million years, probably further. But initially, it was not symbolic, was not culture in the sense that we think of it. Um, and it only acquires sort of modern characteristics about 300,000 years ago, which I know most of you probably think was a long time ago, right? But from an evolutionary point of view, it wasn't. So, if you're in Dallas, Texas, in the first three months of next year, go to the Nasher Sculpture Center. You will see all of these artifacts and many more on display. Thank you.